Okay, good afternoon and welcome back to our channel. Here's that Sony PS1100 we were dinking with a week or so ago. I have got the table wobble negated. Took a lot of straightening and fidgeting and tweaking, but it really doesn't wobble much anymore like it did. The chassis is a little bouncy and we, there, we might install a little bit of foam under there to kind of stabilize that. Originally it had foam in the springs and that all turned to dust or actually it turned into a hard rock. But uh, today we have that elusive cartridge we need for it so we'll set up on the tripod and then we'll actually set this thing up. Okay, I think this angle will allow everybody to see what we're doing. Um, we have a marketed by Fansteel, an AT3600L, it's an Audio-Technica cartridge. Um, I really like this little Fansteel box, that's pretty cool, and uh, I like their little stylus guy, I think he's pretty cool looking. I have no idea if you can make that out, I'll try to put it against my hand, maybe you can see his little logo, not that it matters. So we have our cartridge, and it's got its guard on it. And that actually looks like it's uh, should be a diamond stylus. It actually looks like it's a carbon fiber-ish type cantilever, which I know they did some of those for LP gear. And the main reason I ordered this as opposed to a different model is they actually included the mounting hardware. So that makes it nice since all of that junk is missing off of this uh, table. So, step one is just going to be to attach the screws to the cartridge and attach the cartridge to the um, table. The wires under here are color-coded and they're also, of course, not, yeah, we have LR plus minus back here, so I'll look at uh, a quick little diagram and see what, uh, what goes where. That should be pretty straightforward. It looks like they gave me uh, nylon washers, screws of long and short lengths, and two nuts to do the attachment. So that should be adequate to accomplish our task. So um, attaching that, we'll just use a screwdriver in a couple minutes, and once that's on, then we'll proceed. Okay. In regards to the mounting of the head shell leads, I looked it up. Red is right plus, green is right minus, white is blue plus, and uh, whatever the heck color is left over, be, uh, is that the blue? Yeah, that'd be blue. Blue is uh, left minus, so we'll use that when we hook it up. Okay, so if this project hasn't been cursed for a while, it still is. When we put the um, head shell, into, or we put the table or the cartridge into the head shell. Although the holes line up, this little edge here, there's a little bit too much edge for it to be able to turn or to seat all the way up in there. So we're going to have to trim that down just a little bit on the sides just to make a little bit more room. So since it's plastic, we're just going to drag it across to some sandpaper. Okay, so I've slimmed down the sides here and rounded the edges up here, which will give me a little bit of turnability, and that should allow us to align our cartridge. It does fit in the head shell now, and gives me a little bit of room to slip around. Okay, well that was fun. I did get it mounted, and because this has lips on the side, it doesn't make it any easier to get the uh, screws on the bottom, or the, the nuts on the bottom. And because this head shell is not detachable, that doesn't make it any easier either. So now we're going to put our cartridge protractor begrudgingly. Whoever engineered and designed this cartridge protractor wanted to make sure it fits a spindle tight. And boy does it ever. So we'll get that cartridge protractor on there. See if we can get her to sit flat on the mat. Seems to be. And then we'll check our alignment. most important of the two positions is actually the inside position. So we need to put our stylus on the inside position. We 
can. And I can already tell we have way, way, way more tracking force than this can handle because I didn't attach the counterweight yet. So I'm going to probably beat the stylus up too much if I don't attach the counterweight. So we'll put the counterweight on. Once you get the counterweight set, there's a little set screw that will help with that. So just kind of rough it in. There we go. That feels roughed to me. This is a lot of eyeballing. Check one, check the other, check one, check the other, check one, check the other. Okay. And then now that we're there, you can see how our cartridge is actually aligned. And it actually looks pretty good. It looks like it might be a smidge in, but ever, ever, ever so slightly. So we'll check alignment point B. If it's in a little bit there, it's out just a little bit there. And I mean, we're talking cat hairs. This is very, very minor. I think this head shell was designed for a specific cartridge that the head shell itself will sort of pinch and align your cartridge for you. Okay, so that's position two, and that does look just a hair cranked out. So let's try it again on the inside. Yeah, inside looks really lined up, outside looks just a, I mean, we're talking a minuscule amount out. And that might be slightly correctable by moving the cartridge forward a little bit, so I'll try that. And we're going to get this as absolutely best as we can. Um, I'm going to guess that the original uh, stylus cartridge probably came out to the tip a little bit more than this one. Okay, with a little more fiddling, our alignment looks spot on. So now it's time to move on to the tracking force. These tools used to be sold by a company called Lyle Cartridges, and they're no longer with us. But uh, there are similar things. There's like the MoFi Geo Disc and other things like that. Now I have checked. I have checked people's work when they said they aligned with the MoFi Geo Disc, and I honestly think they did a poor job with it. I don't think they did a good job at all. But that's just me being me and complaining. So, um, I'm going to want to run this at about one and three quarters grams. So, this is this cartridge is supposed to be set to track between about one and three grams. So, I'm going to go for around like maybe 1.8. So, I'm going to set my stylus gauge. This only goes out to 1.5 at the end. This is the Sure. Um, it only goes out to 1.5 at the end there. Um, so if you go on the inner, it doubles it. So if I go all the way out there, put it in the center position, that will be 3. Um, so I'm going to go, like I say, close to the 1. So when we balance here, we'll be at 2. So if I'm back a little bit from that, we'll be at like one, one and three quarter, 1.8, something like that. Should be nice and light, but still good for a simpler cartridge. And our tracking force at this point is too light. So we'll come up and we'll bring our weight in just a little bit. Wow, that slides really easy on there.
and we're balanced. There's a little mirror back here that you use to check your balance and see where you are. And it is absolutely dead level there. That is the perfect spot for that given tracking force. So without shifting this weight any which direction, I'll snug it up on there. If I can get my screwdriver to go in there. Come on, play ball with me here. Okay, that should prevent any further movement, and then we'll double check our weight to make sure we're within range of what I intended to set it to. Yeah, so we're just shy of 2 grams. That should be good. Now the last thing I need to do is fix this anti-skating weight. The previous user kind of left a mess of the tail of the string and the string's too long so we're just going to take that off, shorten it up and make it look nice hanging there. Okay, I've cleaned up the anti-skating weight. I'd like to get it to hang a little straighter on there, the knot's a little goofy but I've got the length correct now so it's not drooping way over and somebody loves me. Okay, so as far as I can tell, I think we're good. We've got the right tracking force, we've got our anti-skate weight so it's not in a mess of a state. The only thing missing from this turntable is the 7 inch record adapter which I conveniently got from the same time that we ordered the cartridge, so we'll just put that in the corner. Now it's a complete and ready to play turntable. So the only thing that's weird is this particular model does not have a ground wire on the audio jacks. Um, there is no ground wire, so it might be a humming mess when we plug it into the stereo, but let's, if it's not, then apparently this model doesn't need it. And we're about to find out. Okay, so welcome back to our turntable adventure. We have our turntable hooked to the stereo. And uh, let me try a record here. I've got a chance to uh, actually, I did uh, do a sound check on it. We'll try an independent record. This will hopefully not tip everybody off. This is a band called Gravel. It was on Est Estrus Records. Really, really cool band. I enjoy this uh, kind of stuff very much. It should be 45 RPM, I think. I don't believe they've earmarked it, but uh, I'll give that a play and see what happens. Oh, that's amusing. Apparently this song is long enough that they did run this 7 inch record at 33 RPM rather than 45. So now that we know that, let's fix that. And listen to it at 33 RPM. The way it was intended. As uh, you guys all have no idea, the channel separation on this is actually quite impressive. Um, left and right channels definitely have uh, their own thing going on. Sounds really cool. The rumble from the table itself is there. I mean, but it's a rim drive table, so that kind of happens. It could probably be improved by using an upgrade mat, but it's not bad or distracting um, to the point that I can't, you know, tolerate it. The speed is very good. It's nice and consistent. There's a slight amount of wow and flutter, but that actually is caused by the record itself not being cut straight. So, 
as to go by this record and I can't play it for you so we'll just go to the end of it and we'll make sure that the return mechanism works okay and then we'll call it a victory. That anti-ice gateway likes to pull it to the outside. Let's go to the very end here. Okay, and there's our music fade out. There we go. We're to the end of our record. And lift, return. and off. Victory. Um, this little cartridge probably puts out about three and a half ish millivolts. It's uh, pretty good output and uh, it gives uh, good sound quality on the inside of the record and good sound quality on the outside of the record. So at this point uh, there's nothing to talk about because it works. But We'll come off the tripod real quick. And just look at one last little thing, which I probably said it before, but on all rim drive type turntables, when you're all done, if it's got 33, 45, whatever, put that in the off position to disengage that idler wheel so you don't get a flat spot on it. Otherwise it starts going thump, thump, thump. So go figure. I pull a random 45 out that I thought was cool out of my collection of independent things and it actually runs at 33 rather than 45. Maybe we should find something that runs at 45 just to make sure the speed's good there. Let's try okay, that. And now just because we can, I found a 12 inch record that runs at 45 RPM. This is IQU uh, International Dance Masters. So I'll we'll give this a spin here. 45 RPM. Make sure that that plays good. Should. Don't see why I wouldn't. And the bass drum hits on this are pretty good. This cartridge responds well to that. I know it sounds like we're just listening to a strange drum loop, but that's how this record is. And let's try the tail end of the record to make sure that we still work over there. Catch the last 15 seconds or so. And there we go. We're going to lift, return, 
victory. Turntable is 100% functional and ready to go into service for somebody. Thanks for watching. Take care.